to the 101st edition of The Passion of the Digital Artist. And here he is, that passionate digital artist himself, Jeff Mueller. Wonderful, Xavier. How are you? I'm great, Jeff. How are you? Super. After that uh, 100th video blog, which we really did receive some good feedback on that. Yes, folks. Thank you very much. It was a... A uh, treat and a privilege to be in front of the camera to address all of you, and thank you for all your great comments. Yes, uh, it was really kind of cool that everybody, although they, they realized that you were the model for the mysterious absinthe drinker, and that was really quite a cool thing. They and, and, and although you look a little rough around the edges in that particular painting, and it's not exactly you, they were like, Savior's the model for the mystery. Like, <laughs> you are right. I wasn't exactly looking uh, perfectly polished last Sunday night either. That was kind of a spur of the moment thing. I had a probably, it was kind of like uh, teaching myself how to play a guitar. If I'd have known how tough it was, I probably wouldn't have done it. <laughs> well, it's a good thing that you did it because everybody, there were so many people thanking you and me for uh, doing that video blog, and it was our hundreds, and it really was quite exciting. We are now in the three digits. <laughs> My goodness. Well, maybe here, come 150 or 200, I might step in front of the camera again for a minute. Then. Yeah, that might be that might be special. It's what I find was what's amazing is week in and week out that we find usually there's so much to cover that we end up having too much information, and we like to try and keep it short and sweet, and that's usually what what we're about. So with that in mind, let's go on to what we're going to talk about this week. What do you got for us, Jeff? Uh, what I'd like to cover is as an artist, and, and, and I'm, I am going into serious, trying to break into serious fine art with the digital acrylic painting mix that, that I do, the technique, which is new. It's something new. It's groundbreaking. I really feel that my whole life I've been trained to do it, but it really brings me into something else that a lot of artists uh, get to decide about, and I like to call it, with the little asterisk, rip-off art. Now that's not a bad connotation to it in the fact that I look at it as producing artwork quickly for sale, uh, pop art type artwork where you print it, you do something unique, and you put it out for sale at a reasonable reasonable price for the general buying public. And I will give you... Give us so, an example of that. I'm sorry. Yes, I'll give you an example of the Market Zero painting of that we did for the Due to Buy, that I did for the Due to Buy show. That particular thing would be considered, I used a scene from the movie, so it's something that I didn't actually go out. When I create my fine art, I basically go out looking for the painting. I capture it, the reference with my own photograph. The painting's completely mine. And, You're and totally it, vertically integrated from concept right, to finish. to finish. And I'm doing, I'm expressing myself that way. Whereas when you're dealing with this, you're using other people's imagery. And tell us a little bit about that. How do you do that and not get into trouble by doing well, it? Well, the, the big thing when you're doing this type of work that some of the artists run into is cease and desist orders, where you've used something that somebody else doesn't want you to use, and they send you a letter saying, stop doing this, otherwise there'll be legal action. And most artists then will stop doing that type of thing. When it comes to like a movie or a movie star or an athlete, if you're doing one of a kind of artwork of these people, you're not going to usually get the cease and desist from, let's say, the do to buy, you're, because it's promotion of that. If you're, especially if you're showing that person or that scene in the context, the, usually if it's a scene from a movie, you're showing it in the context of the movie. You're not, right. It's, that's what they're, you're, you're, it's not like you're producing your own movie that's a total ripoff of of the Big of Lebowski. The, right. And, and also, that was a one-of-a-kind piece. You're not printing T-shirts or mass marketing that particular Correct. image. Correct, and that's really what it's about. It's the one-time use, and it really kind of promotes that per that person or that movie for free. So they actually look at it as a positive thing. But 
let's say you're gonna do a do a portrait of a famous actor that Ann Leibovitz photographed. If you take her photograph and you do a painting of it, you might get a cease and desist from her because that's her image of that person, which she paid the rights to. But if you grab that person out of the movie and do a portrait of that person, or let's say a, a athlete that you grab from taking your own pictures or off of uh, grabs from the NFL, it's promoting those people. But if you're gonna take it from a picture that some journalistic photographer took, you might get it from there. So that's kind of how that works, where you're gonna get the cease and desist, as long as you're not matched. But in most cases, you don't do that. For instance, we did the 80s show, which is coming up, and I did a really kind of cool piece of all the 80s uh, monsters. Uh, pinhead, uh, I did it of Alien, Predator, and it's a pain. Freddy. They're all put together in one. It doesn't exist, but the imagery that I took were images that were released by the studios. Now, I put it on saw blades, and that's kind of a cool thing, each one, but each one's its own individual piece of artwork, and I'm not going to be mass producing it or putting it on a t-shirt. So that's how that works, and that's why I like to call it call it rip off art. You rip it off because you're taking an imagery, other other imagery around, or let's say magazines, newspapers, that type of thing, and you produce artwork fairly quickly that way. That's why what it is. But I but that type of work. Now as a fine artist, where I'm okay with producing this type of art is if I've asked to been participate in a group show, in a group setting. For instance, if you're going to be in a group show about the Big Lebowski, really your imagery is going to be grabbed and your reference is going to be coming from the movie. So it's tough not to do something like that unless, you know, something for, from scratch just like that on your own. And so usually you're doing a grab from here as far as reference. You know, that's what you're going to get. Now, as far as the 80s show, same thing. But for me... I'm not a pop artist, so it's pretty much strictly to the shows. Pop artists might do more. If you're going to be a pop artist, you're going to be doing more of this type of artwork. But once again, you have to watch out for the rights and what you're doing and whose imagery you're using. It really is important to do that. And most importantly, is if you do get asked to cease and desist, one, your exposure has been good enough that it got back to the person who is asking you to cease and desist, two, you cease and desist, and you should have no problems. It's really how it kind of works. So I wanted to cover that. Thanks for clearing. The artwork that I'm doing this way, digitally, mixing digital painting with acrylic painting and doing this type of style, it's very important to me that when I'm doing it, that everything that I'm doing was my concept, my reference, my digital painting and my acrylic painting so that everything that I'm creating is an expression of me. With that said, give a little bit of a quick. I am doing the newest, yes. working on the newest painting. I'll give you a quick reference. It's a shot from Niagara Falls. And it, it, this is a combination of a landscape combined with people uh, once again, my social media, multimedia uh, concept where people are getting together, random strangers talking and doing things together. So in this case, you can see that this particular painting, Niagara Falls, was, was, was visiting the falls. It's by far a spectacular place to visit, folks. But I've, this is going to be the first vertical 30 by 60 that I work on. And I really think the falls lend itself to be the first. And I'm just, I just love the composition and everything that's happening in this particular painting. And then I'll give you a good shot of the water. I, throughout my commercial art career, have always been really good at doing and creating water. So this has been a really uh, fun piece to start painting. If you can see the brush strokes, that's that's happening, and then I'll give you a good. But getting into that detail of painting the the, the this, I'm enjoying painting this one a lot. I love 
there's people there's the the walkway the the lumber the timber of the walkway rocks and the falls and then you're dealing with uh fast moving water and then a little bit more rapids uh and then the rocks and the rapids but then the mist and there's a lot of feeling that you can get in in brush strokes of the mist as, as you can see through there and the ever-present people ever so important right and I think what I like about that photo that you took and then what you're starting to blend and make into an actual portrait is you have like the the regular geometry of the steps and walkway there yes and then you have the irregular flow of the water over the rocks and the mist and the the regular but not 100 percent uniform shapes of the people so it's a good blend of of precision versus free flow and i think that that captures a lot yeah, and the composition, right in there. the composition naturally in this case is just moving you through the painting. It's you got the winding of the people, like you were saying, and then you've got the straight down sideways and then bring you forward, but then leave you up into the people and back and around and you're really not jumping out of the painting. So no. and it's and if you look here on the bottom, I gave a like a little bit of a a roadblock to stop you from going and it, it actually exists like that but I left that in there because it's very important not to just flow off the page and that that when it in its photo form that was taken when you were on vacation when that would have been let's see before we went to that would have not last summer but the summer before so that would have been the summer of 2012 so you've been thinking about this one for a long time. Yeah, I've got, I've got paintings, <laughs> a lot of paintings. It's uh, even, even now I've got so many lined up, but I'll go someplace. I was just at the Milwaukee Art Museum, and there was a, there was a, there was like an opportunity for four or five really gorgeous paintings, and I've got them captured and they'll get done. But these particular, you know, it's just particular which ones come out and which ones you want to work on and which way you want to push it. Anything else? I think that's it for this week. I just want to plug a movie that Jeff and his wife and me and my wife just saw today, Monument Men, uh, with George Clooney and uh, Bill Murray and John Goodman from The Big Lebowski. Yep. Uh, that it's it's a very good flick. You might think it's a little slow getting started, but they have to give you some detail into it. But it's based on a true story. And uh, Jeff and I both liked it because it blended real history and the Second World War, of which our parents and or grandparents were veterans of, and art and preserving and saving arts before the Nazis could destroy it. So if you want to see an interesting flick... And you love art. And you love art and get a little historical background behind it, go see it. Yeah, definitely. It was a good... It's good. It's right up the alley. I mean, for me and you, you, I love art. You love art too. <laughs> it couldn't get. It wasn't much better. Than so anyhow, yeah, we got it. We kind of digressed there, but go see the movie, folks. You'll enjoy it. All right. Take care. Bye -bye.